G'day folks, welcome to another episode of Learn to Paint TV. Rod Moore here from the Learn to Paint Academy with you again. This week I've got a, a really interesting little subject um, for you to paint. It's a landscape scene. Let me show you the photo here. This is a little photo that I took when I was on one of my many travels. And the reason why I think this is a really interesting photo and a good subject for us to paint is it has two very distinct uh, planes, if you like. You've got this foreground um, and the, the old sheds with the row of trees all on one level. And then behind that in the distance, you've got this mountain with the uh, escarpment rocks and so on. And um, there's a very definite difference between the values and also the saturation of the paint. Okay, so we're gonna use the more method of painting, which is our three steps, three colors, three brushes. And I'm gonna start off with a little uh, flat brush like this one here, and we'll get stuck into step one, our drawing. So let's get underway. So the first thing we need to establish is uh, getting that mountain in. So I'll just mix up a little dark with our blue and our red here. And, uh, Keep that a fairly loose mix. I'll just use a little bit of water just to loosen that mix. That's going to be our drawing. So we don't want that paint to be too um, thick. Now, the, the sort of top of that mountain is going to run sort of like that. It's a little bit flat on top. I'm going to put it to, to the right-hand side there. Um, don't put it too far across because we want to be able to get that shape down inside there. But I don't want that right in the middle. And the way I've taken the photo is it does appear to be um, how does that run? Down there, it drops down there. It does appear to be uh, more in the middle than what we're going to do it here, okay? So just pop it to one side, it'll make for a more interesting composition. And um, there's the rocky bluff there. And so once we've got that in, that's pretty easy to get that shape in. You don't have to get it exact, just try and get a replication of it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a horizon line in, or you know, the the line where the shed sit quite low in the painting there like that. Okay, so we won't have a lot of grasses and things in the foreground here. And then with our shed, again, we don't want to have the sheds right in the middle. We want to put the sheds to one side. So the reason why I moved the bluff over that way was to be a bit of a counterbalance to um, the sheds here. So the roof of the shed runs through there, runs up that way. Back that way. Well, actually, it's a bit, a bit of a different shape, this one. It's running more like that. Probably an old shearing shed. We'll run that to there. We'll run that down to there. Okay. Run that there and there. And then there's a little bit of a veranda that comes out of a post to there. So it is important that we spend just a little bit of time getting the shape of... Uh, this building, right? Because this is going to be our center of interest. It's going to be the main um, focal point in this painting. So, but you know, if you don't get it 100% right first go, that's okay. Because we can always adjust it with our um, block in. We can shift those lines around a little bit. Okay, so we get that in. Now I've made them a little bit bigger than what they actually are. So just be aware of that, because um, because they are our focal point. I'll fill with well, they probably could go a little bit bigger. We got trees like so, that's sort of a gum tree look there. There's all all different levels of trees in here. Okay, so we'll just run a little line of them through there, and then it kind of opens up on this side. But I haven't left a lot of room for that. But there is a little bit of a distant bit of land there, but it is on that second plane in the distance there. So we'll just work around that, okay? So I'm taking a big uh, one inch hog hair bristle brush, okay? And we're going to mix our darkest dark first. So we'll take our ultramarine blue, we can mix it there. Little, we still wanna have a, a runny mix for we're doing a blocking. Not a, maybe not as quite as much as this one here. Um, so paint consistency is always important. Now, if you're painting with acrylics, then just use a bit of water to thin it down so it flows, or one of the mediums, okay? 
I'm just taking Alizar and Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, and a little bit of this yellow ochre here. We'll probably a touch too much of the yellow ochre, so a little bit more of the blue into it there, a little bit more red. Let's just see what we've got. So you can even use water because it's water mixed with oils or just a touch of whatever thinner comes with the brand that you um, are using. And so around the sheds here, I'll start there and we'll, we'll work on getting our darkest dark so that we can create the most amount of contrast between these trees and the sheds here. And you know, in the foreground or in your focal point, contrast is important. You don't want to have too much contrast in the background, though. Okay. It's a little bit on the bluey side, but we can live with that for the moment. Nice big gum tree in there. We'd make it a little bit warmer in tone. Okay. I can get a little bit more yellow into parts of it. And let's come in maybe with that one there. So you can see we're putting our darks in, but we're don't be afraid to move your darks cooler, warmer, and so on, depending on what you feel they need. But we'll just push it slightly warmer because if you have a look in the photo there, you can see that there's um, you know, it's not a lot of green in there. It's mostly dried off, burnt off grasses and they do get a little bit warmer in tone. So we'll just put in a dark warm in there and then we can put some highlighty grasses over the top of that. So make sure you... Uh, you understand when, you know, what tone to put into your foreground like that. I, I saw recently on uh, YouTube, another YouTube instructor copied my idea of having this ready orange um, underpaint, but he missed the sort of subtleties as to when and why you would do it. And it didn't quite work out, I don't think. Um, and really, you would put the red and orange in there when you're going to go for a bright green, for the grass is usually when you do it because that bright green is a complement of uh, of the ready orange, right? So uh, because we're not going to do bright green field here, we're going to do burnt off grasses. They're mostly yellows. Uh, so what we will do is we'll take our blue here, we'll take a chunk of this white, and I'll just mix it into that grey colour there. Okay. And we don't want this too bright. So let me take a little bit of the red, and a little bit of the yellow ochre. It needs to be on the cool side, so mostly blue. Okay. And I'll just dirty it up with that tone. And that ties it in with the foreground, of course. And... I'll just get a little bit bluer, I think. It's probably getting close. Okay. I'll use a little bit of thinner in this just to make the paint flow. And then let's test that. Yeah, that's that's a good tone. That's a sort of a grey blue tone. Okay, and I'm gonna run that in. I'm gonna leave some gaps in there for our bluff. Although the, it's not the bluff, it's the, uh, it's just a rocky face there. Okay. So I don't make this too strong, too dark, because if it is, it'll come forward too much. And what we want is this just to sit in the background. Okay. 
we're off that edge a little. All right, so now the key is as we come up to these trees, um, we don't want to get into those darks. We want to try and keep the distant mountains a nice clean color. Because those darks will, if we drag those back into the distance, then we'll lose that effect of that separation. Now, probably, if anything, I probably need to run that a little bit higher up that end. So I will, I will do that because it does look a little bit different from the photo at the moment, which is probably too much different. It probably needs to run more up to about there, I think. So I'll just pop that in. Not a problem. Okay, you can see, you can see how easy it is to fix up some drawing issues if you have them. I'll get some of this titanium white. Right there, some alizarin crimson and some yellow ochre. Okay, we'll mix up a little reddy orange tone. And I'll get some of this dark to grey it. Okay, we don't want that to be too bright. So I'll just grey it back. Probably need to reduce it a little bit more in, in value, so a bit more white. A little touch more yellow into it. a little bit more of this bluey gray so what I'm, by adding that bluey gray what we're doing is reducing the saturation making it grayer rather than the tube color because the tube color would be too bright and what I'll just run that in here So, notice over on this side I'm merging that in a little bit more with the paint that we've already got there and with a little bit of careful observation you'll also see that there's a couple of little spots that are poking out here and there like there for instance So the sky is a fairly neutral gray, gray blue sort of sky. So we'll just do it as that. We'll take a big chunk of this white here and get some of this blue. Take a little bit of this dirty color here just to gray it back. Okay. Probably need a little touch more red and yellow in there. Whoop, that's way too much. That's fine. Bit more white and probably didn't have enough paint anyway. A little bit of thinner in that, and it wants to be that's too dark. See so yeah, how if you have a look, compare that, I'll put it into the sky, compare it to the value there, and they're just a little bit too similar. So I'll lighten it off. So, you can see on the palette, that's quite a bit lighter than what I had just mixed up. So, that's probably a bit better. It's probably still a little touch dark. You can see the influence of those other primaries in there. What I'll do, I'll just do it fairly neutral and bland. And if we feel we need to make adjustments, we can. I'm going to go a bit lighter. I'll take another chunk of that white, mix it to there. And we'll just run that in. medium brush here so I'm going to take this medium brush and uh, just looking at it this is all 
these sheds here are pretty much in shadow um, and there's a bit of rust on the roofs and so on so I'll start off with mixing up a um, corrugated roof color so we'll start with white and I don't mind there's a bit of uh, dirty color in that white there I don't need a pure white it can be a little bit grayed off we'll put just a little touch of the blue into it okay so we don't want a pure white here because unless it's brand new it's not going to look pure white um, something like that will be fine okay a little tiniest little touch of the uh, thinner and what I'll do I'll pop it I'll pop in this uh, corrugated iron roof in here and then we'll just lay some rusty color over the top of it I think that'll work Just run those in there. Uh, French ultramarine blue. Take our alizarin crimson or permanent crimson. Depending on what brand you're using. So you can see there's a we mix that together, it gives you a dark, but it goes to the purple side. So a little touch of the yellow in there. The third primary will just take the purpleness out of it. Okay. Maybe just a touch more. See that? It goes to a more of a um, grey, and we want to just make it a cool grey. Lighten it off a little bit. Okay. If I just left the blue and the red, which makes a nice dark, but as soon as you add white to it, it's going to go purpley or mauvey, and we don't want that um, in this particular case. Okay. So with that tone there, let us just block in the walls. Now it's quite dark, but remember we're going to put some highlight colours over all the foliage, which should pick it all up. And then it won't be as dark on these walls once we get that foliage in. And in a couple of spots here, we've got like a dark window just there. And dark window there. Probably going to be some sort of shadow through there. Dark sort of piece of the corrugated iron there missing. Put some sort of door there, although it's a bit big, but we'll um and then for that rust colour we'll mix up a little bit of the red, a little bit of the yellow, so we get a bit of a ready orange tone. We'll take some of that just to lighten it off. We'll pop some of that rust on the roof. And for this, I'm just going to just place it here and just drag it down. Um, I like the shape of this tree, so we'll keep that sort of shape. It's kind of that shape. And I'll pop in some... Uh, 
Pop in some trunks and things in there. I might soften that out. In a moment, we'll come back and we'll put those little sort of details in. Okay, now I think I'll, I'll get something just slightly punchier green. Um, a brighter green, and we'll just come in here and just work this one into a bit of a tree shape. Blurring it slightly with that underpaint, which is fine. But don't remember, don't paint out all that shadow. Keep some of it in there. Okay, so now we'll get a little bit of yellow ochre. We'll get a little touch of this red, and we'll pick up some of that green into that. So it's more of an orangey sort of tone here. So we're getting a little bit of variety in our foliage colours in the main sort of trees that are there. Okay, so we pop another one of those orangey ones in there. And it's important to have that little bit of variety, I think. It gives it all a nicer feel overall. With some of these secondary trees here, I'm not gonna to fuss too much, I'll just pop a bit of color down for those. In fact, I'll come back in and I'll paint a little bit of dark back into some of those as well. Um, we've got a little bush just in there. I think we have one in there from memory in the front. Just create a little bit more contrast. Okay, so it's, the paint's a little bit thin in there, so work in that dark in there where I need it. That'll enable me just to straighten up a few lines as well, like so. That's good out of control. If I need to knock any of that green back, I can just paint the dark back up into it. Well, I'll switch to a big brush again, back to a big brush. I'll take the yellows and greens. We'll use that colour we've already got there. However, just to uh, get a, that sort of dirty grass, burnt grass, browny, orangey tone. Okay, and then let's just start to work that into the field here. And again, as I always say, Leave plenty of that underpaint to come through here and there as well. So it's not a bright paint in this, it's a little bit sort of shadowy grey overall. But I can, you know, just punch up that colour with a little bit of cadmium yellow and just through part of that sort of centre of it there. Just put some slightly brighter grasses in there. If I want, I can light it up by doing that. There's no right or wrong here, actually. I'll utilise that underpainting to best effect, especially in the corners. So there you go, a little bit of grass there. We maybe just pop a little patch of green because I can see it in the photo. So we'll get a little bit of the cad yellow and a little bit of the ultramarine blue and get that green in just in a couple of spots in there. Going to utilize what we've already got and just add a little bit more white into it. And that's running right through here. So I'll just indicate that I don't want it, it's pretty dominant in the 
um, photo, but I'm just going to tone it back a bit. Okay. I don't want the eye being drawn to that necessarily. Um, that makes a nice little trunk colour. I'll get a little touch of the thinner with that brush. And let's just test that to see if that's going to work. Yeah, that's not bad. Don't have to be too bright everywhere, so what I'll do is just turn it back a little. I think we're just about finished this one. Again, you know, it's a little demo and um, I think it illustrates the point where we've got two very definite uh, planes or sections of this uh, painting. So we had this foreground area with the sheds and the trees and uh, then we had the very definite background mountain range. And you can see the separation there from these highlighted trees, these warmer tones and back to the cool mountain. I think that's working uh, pretty well. It's a, yeah, it's a bit of tidy up, like, you know, getting that line in there right, things like that, which um, obviously you would do if you want to make this into a more finished painting. Uh, but for the purposes of sort of getting to a, a, a reasonable working stage with this painting as a demo, I think we've got there, and uh, I think it's give, hopefully given you some good ideas on how to put together a little scene. It's not a, a highly sunlit scene. It, um, it's a, you know, a little bit on the dark side, which we don't mind. And um, it's just a matter of understanding the values, how this is all darker in here. And then this is not as dark, but it's also less saturated paint and grayed off. And then the sky is a lighter value again. So uh, hopefully you've been able to pick up that um, approach to creating aerial perspective in a painting. There's a few other little things in there which we'll go into maybe in, in a more advanced project. But I think this is a fun little project and it's definitely one you could do pretty easily. I've just used a very simple approach. The more method of painting, three steps. We basically use three colors plus a little bit of cadmium yellow right at the end and um, three brushes. And you know, if you follow along with those steps, you too can reproduce this painting, but also learn aerial perspective and how you can apply it to your own painting. So I hope that's helped. Now, if you haven't done so already, go and register for our free course. Here's the web address right underneath me here. Um, it's www.learntopaint.academy. Go there, click on register for the free course and uh, get yourself registered for that. And it goes into more detail about what I've just shared with you in this episode of Learn to Paint TV. And um, I'll talk you through the more method of painting. And then there's four different demonstrations just like this one for you to work your way through. So thanks for joining me. I'll see you next week on Learn to Paint TV. Cheers for now.